Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering UiPath Forward Americas 2019. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of UI Path Forward here at the Bellagio in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, co-hosting alongside Dave Vellante. We are joined by Gavin Jackson. He is the Senior Vice President and Managing Director, EMEA, at UiPath. Thanks so much for coming on Thanks the show. Thanks for having show. me, and you, to be here. You are brand spanking new to the brand company. Brand spanking new. You were at AWS for four years, yeah. joined UiPath in September. Yeah. I wanted to start this conversation by having you talk a little bit about what, what appealed to you about UiPath and what made yeah. you want to make the leap after four years at AWS? Yeah, so um, I had the privilege at AWS of really having a really uh, close proximity to enterprise customers and getting the opportunity to listen to what they really wanted when they were talking about their digital transformation journeys. And as it turns out, the sort of cloud first and the automation first eras, if you will, or operating models are two, two sides of the same coin. If you think about what the, uh, the, the cloud proposition has been over the last number of years, it's really been about sort of reducing or eliminating the undifferentiated heavy lifting so that builders can build, and then that turned into an operating model principle and then became sort of cloud first. And it's the same thing for the automation world. Uh, you know, we are reducing and eliminating the undifferentiated heavy lifting of, 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 pro of, of, product, of um, uh, uh, business processes and tasks and everything else, whether they're complex tasks or simple tasks, removing that so that builders can build and business people can innovate and uh, giving them the freedom to do what they need to do as business owners. Now I'm going to keep pushing on this, the yeah. similarities and differences, because where it seems to break down is where RPA is focusing on the citizen developer, the, the end user. I'm afraid of AWS, I won't go near it. I, mean, <laughs> I see that console, I go, oh, call yeah. my, my techies. Hey, you know, AWS is, you know, you got to be, you know, pretty technical to actually leverage yeah. it. At the same time, I'm thinking, well, maybe not. Maybe my builders are building things that I can touch. Mm. But help us square that circle. Yeah, so I, I think you're, the, the, the world is trending towards as much automation as possible. So if it can be automated, or if you can reduce the, the, uh, the, the, the burden to get to innovation, I think, you know, technology is moving that way. Even in coding, I think the trends that we're, we're seeing, whether it's AWS or anyone else, is low to no code. And so we, we occupy a world within the RPA space or the intelligent automation space where we're providing tools for people that don't need a requirement or, or a skill set to code and they can still uh, manufacture, if you will, their own automations. Uh, and particularly with a, a release that we're, we're just announcing today, uh, which is Studio X, it, it, it really kind of reduces the friction from a business user who has zero understanding of how to code to build their own automations, whether it's kind of recording a process or just dragging and dropping different components into a process, uh, even, I, even I could do that. And that's saying something, I can tell you. Yeah. Your alter ego is Tony Stark. Well, so, yes, exactly, yeah. So just in terms of this idea of democratizing the, the, the automation, the building, you said yeah. even just someone who's pretty decent at Excel can yeah. do this now. Yeah, very much so. So what will this mean? I mean, what, 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 does, what does that bode for the future of how work gets done? Because yeah. I mean, that is at the core of what you're doing, is scientifically yeah. understanding how and where work gets done, yeah. where are the bottlenecks, where are the challenges, and how can RPA fix this? So I think ultimately, like a lot of technologies, it's really about the, the exponential curve of productivity. And whether you're looking at a national level, a global level, a company level, a human level, at every level productivity has declined really over the last number of years. And, and technology hasn't done a great job to improve that. And you can say that some technologies have done a good job. Again, I'd use AWS as a good job in terms of the proliferation or the, uh, how prolific you can get more code out and more, more progress there. But overall productivity has declined. So our sort of view of the world is that if you can democratize uh, automation, if you can use uh, or add a digital workforce to your, to, your, to your teams, then you'll have an exponential curve of productivity, which at a human level is important, at a company level is important, at a national level is important, and probably at a global level is important. So we're, we're at this tipping point yeah. uh, for, for technology really unlocking a lot of value. Mm. One of the things that your former boss, Jeff Bezos, said was bet on dreamy businesses that yeah. have unlimited upside. These, these dreamy businesses, customers love them, they grow to very large sizes, they have yeah. strong returns on capital, and they can endure for decades. I wonder if you could put UiPath yeah. Yeah. in that context of a dreamy business. What does he know, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's absolutely right. I mean, so, 
Um, and this is one of the reasons I was attracted, by the way, to, to UiPath, because I think, I think that the robots themselves, if you can just kind of look at the, the subcategory of the robot, um, I think it's on a similar curve to how Gordon Moore was talking about the Intel microprocessor in 1965 and the exponential curve of progress. I think we're on that similar curve. So when I sort of project five years from now, I just think that the amount the robots will be able to do, the cognitive kind of capabilities that we'll be able to do, are just phenomenal. So, um, and, and customers customers give us feedback all the time about two, two things. They, they love and they value what we do. The value is important because it's very empirical. For the first time, they can actually deploy a technology and see almost an immediate return on that technology. Whether it's a point technology solving one process or a group of processes, they can see an immediate empirical return. The other thing that I like to measure, I quite like, is that they value it. Uh, sorry, they, they, they love it, they love and value it. So they love it, meaning it actually induces an emotion. So when you, when you watch the robots in action, and they watch something that, that has been holding your team back, or that has been stifling productivity, or whatever it is, people get giddy about it. It's quite fascinating to see. I want to come back to uh, something you said about your comment about Gordon Moore, mm. and, and tie that to digital transformation. When I think of digital transformation, I think of data. Yeah. Like what's the difference between a business and a digital business? It's how they use data. Yeah. They put data at the core. And for years, we marched to the cadence of Moore's Law, and yeah. it, that's changed. It's that, that's not what the innovation engine is today. It's, it's machine intelligence, it's data, and it's cloud for yeah. scale. Where do you guys fit? I mean, obviously AI is a piece of that, but, but maybe you could add some color yeah. to where RPA fits in that equation. So I think that's an important point, because uh, there's a lot of miscommunication, I think, about really what it means when you talk about digital transformation and what it means to be digitally transformed and really digitally transformed, you're really talking about a category of customers which are large, more institutional enterprises and governments because they have something to transform. What they're transforming into is more of a digital native sort of set of attributes, uh, more insurgent mindsets. And these companies are, to your point, they're very data hungry, they harvest as much data as they can from, from uh, value from data. They're very customer centric, they focus on the customer experience. Uh, they use other people's resources, you know, the cloud being one great example of that, and the missing point from what you said is they automate everything. They're born automated. So part of the digital transformation journey is that if it can be automated, it will be automated, and anything that's new will be born automated. So let me ask you a follow up on that. Is there um, a cultural difference in, in EMEA versus what you're seeing in North America in terms of their receptivity to automation? I mean, there are certain parts of of Europe, which are you know more protective of jobs. Do you see a cultural difference, or are they kind of? I mean, we do see even some resistance here. But when you talk to customers, they're like, "No, it's 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 wonderful. I love it." What are you seeing in Europe? So I, I don't I don't see much of a cultural difference there, and I actually don't I don't see yet. I haven't seen any feedback yet. It's very, I'm very new still, but I haven't seen anybody talk about really that this technology is a technology to take jobs out. I think most people see this technology as a way of getting better performance out of humans. You know, pivoting them towards more. So I would say like um, uh, in, in some markets in, in, my, in, my, in my prior life, in, in many prior lives, I would say that there's some countries like France, for example, that would have been a little bit more uh, stayed within their approach to new technologies and adoption, not so with regards to automation. They see this as a real, again, productivity increase technology. I think, I think that's true for people who have tasted it. Yeah. But I do think there's still a, some reticence in the ranks uh, until they actually experience it. That's why we'll talk to some customers about it. Yeah. They'll have bot-a-thons and you know, just to, yeah. to educate people on yeah. what's possible. They'll let them try to build their own robots and then people, then the light bulbs go off. Well, and Gavin's point too is that, it, that it's taking away the aggravations, the frustrations, the mundane, the drudgery. Yeah. And then you said people get giddy about those things. They Wait, do. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but then the question is also, so, so what creative things are you doing now? Mm -hmm. So how are you spending your time? What are you doing differently that makes your job more interesting, more compelling? Yeah. And, and, and I think that that's the real question too. So yeah. what is the, okay, yes, we're saving some money and people aren't having to do yeah. these mundane tasks, but then what, are, what is the value add that the employees are now bringing to the table? Yeah, so and actually, so Dave, um, Dave made the right point as well in terms of the mechanism for doing that, is that the, the part of the battle here is to spark the imagination. 
Yeah, just like anything really, just like, like in, back in the Amazon world, it's all about sparking the imagination. If you can, if you can imagine it, you can build it. It's the same thing really with, within our world now, is, 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 is figuring out with customers what, thing, what tasks do they do that they hate doing, either at a user level or a, or a, or a downstream level. What are the things that they really want to do that they need our help to harvest? And so we do the same sort, the same sort of things that we would have done with AWS, where we did lots of hackathons and you know, brought lots of technology uh, partners in with us, and we were sort of building all of this. We do the, exactly the same thing uh, with the RPA space. It's exactly the same. Well, this is really mechanism. important because creativity is going to become an increasingly important component. Because if productivity goes up, it means you can do the same amount of work with less people. So it is going to impact jobs, and people are going to have to be comfortable to get out of their comfort zone and, and become creative and find ways to yeah. apply these technologies to really advance, you know, drive value through their organizations. And actually, I, I look at this as well as a long-term technology, right, as a long-term technology, as something that's important for my children. I have three, and uh, they're still very young, so uh, 12, 10, and six, but eventually they will go into the workplace with these skills embedded. They will just know that the, how you get work done is you have your robot do a whole load of tasks for you here, and your, your job is to build and to be creative and to harvest data and to manipulate data and, and serve customers and focus on the customer experience. That's really what the it's all about. The real brain work. The real brain work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Gavin, a pleasure having you on the show. It's Great luck at UiPath. Thank you so much, appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight for, Jay, for Dave Vellante. Please stay tuned for more from theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath coming up in just a little bit.